Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Susie. We're the Janais from Poissant's Ranch in the Applegate Valley. In 1898, my grandfather came to Jacksonville, Oregon and brought the heritage of winemaking and cattle uh, to the United States. So this has kind of been in our blood for a long time. Uh, and the name of the... Oh yeah, he named his place uh, Poissant's Orchards. So that's where our name came from. Each year we produce about uh, 2,000 cases of wine and uh, we process about 55 head of cattle. Come on guys, let's go. That's it, come on. So these, these, these cows are 100% grass fed, no grain ever. It takes a little longer for them to fatten up because typically a cow doesn't fatten until it's done growing without grain. So these cows are, are going on three years old, some of them before they go to harvest, uh, where an, uh, a conventional cow would never be over two years old. And this is where we store the, the processed beef. Uh, there's about 30 head of cows in there now. Probably have room for at least 50 or 60 head of cows. So everything's born here, leaves in a package. We had to give up antibiotics to keep animals in, in the organic program. But if an animal gets sick or hurt, we don't withhold antibiotics from it. We give it the antibiotics, but then it has to go out of the organic plant. So it is now a conventional cow, it's not an organic cow. And how do we know that is that pink tag tells us that this animal is one that Susie raised with a bottle. Because it's not an organic cow, it'll be sold outside of the organic plant. This is, uh, we're standing in the, what we call the grass pasture. We know for sure that this piece of ground has not been plowed for 100 years. This hay is really tough, hard to mow, hard to bale, and, but it has a lot of forage, a lot of roughage, and a lot of protein for the cows. So we're looking for green. Lot, all this, the green is good, healthy, nutritious forage for the, for the animals. Cattle um, are the only living animals that can uh, digest and make good out of lignin. And, uh, and we can't digest lignin. We can, do, we, can, we can get the carbohydrates out of the grains, out of the seeds, and we can um, get some of the protein out of the seeds, but all the stock is totally, pretty much undigestible to us. The bacteria grow because of the lignin and the stock, and then the cows eat the bacteria. So that's part of that circle of order that in this universe, it's pretty cool. In 1998, we started a grapevine nursery. This here is a two acre block. There's 18 varieties here. The whole philosophy of the grapevine nursery is we take, depending on what kind of dirt you have, we have a, a variety of rootstock that likes your dirt. And then depending on uh, where you live, what your climate is, what kind of wine you want to make, we take one bud of this varietal and we graft on the top of that uh, rootstock stick then we go to a callus room, then we go to a greenhouse, and we propagate a plant, a custom plant for your vineyard. So that's basically the nutshell of a grapevine nursery. We, we still had the dairy when we started that, and, um, and we were selling about 50,000 grafted grapevines a year, plus milking cows, and, and planting our vineyards. And uh, eventually, we were able to sell the cows and move on to the wine business. So uh, we're here in the cemetery vineyard. We don't really till any, we mow. We're on about two to three foot of blue clay with cobble rock here. So the, the roots want to grow out and they don't have to go down because they have everything they need right there. So every couple years we rip with a, a large shank ripper and we cut these lateral roots off. It causes the roots to go down more. The, the soil here is very shallow. It's kind of a blue clay with a cobble. Um, everything from this size to that size cobble. We might water our vineyards uh, once or twice a year, that's it. This up here grows much better wine. You can control the their water intake and uh, manage their growth a lot better and the vigor. This is uh, Mondus on 101.14. So from here down is 101.14 and up here is Mondus. The roots of the American rootstock is resistant to a phloxera and the roots of the Mondus are not. So you do the grafting to avoid uh, uh, being uh, infected with a phylloxera. And also you can um, select a rootstock that likes wet dirt or, or likes sandy soil or likes clay soil or likes, you know, is drought tolerant. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this rootstock section. And then whatever kind of wine you want to make, you add the, that scion on the top. 
So here we are in the, the cemetery, right next to the cemetery vineyards. This is the Sparland Cemetery. It's a pioneer cemetery. Uh, a lot of the old timers are here. The Elijah Davison who, who found the Oregon Caves while bear hunting is planted just up the hill here. So we're kind of scratching out a little niche here for ourselves. And we still got four or five lots with a view here. So we're in good shape. These are our, our buddies, uh, part of the circle of order in the, the great scheme of things. Uh, they just returned from the Sacramento Valley where they were pollinating the almonds. And here they're back to do their job here in Southern Oregon. We enjoy having them around and they're, they're a big help for the whole ecological picture. Okay, we're in the, uh, the, the tasting room barrel room here. Um, this was once uh, our milking parlor. This is where we milked the cows for 30 years. This rock here um, used to stand down in the pit four feet. And up here was five cows on this side, five cows on that side over there. So we've just repurposed this building into a barrel room now. We poured the steps, filled the uh, pit with rock. And once this room gets to be 50 degrees, all this wine, all this rock, all this concrete is 50 degrees. It's well insulated. It takes a lot to change it. So this is all kind of uh, uh, naturally cooled and maintained. But this is the 18 vintage up there in the other barrel room was the 17. This is the 18. When, that, when we bottled those wines uh, at the end of the summer, these wines will be pumped up there, and then the new wines will be made in here. We'll heat up this room, run all our uh, fermentation vats in here to keep temperature control on them, and, uh, and then we start the process all over again. We cold stabilize by opening these doors and turning on the fans. When it gets down, of course, close to 30 degrees, we put the big fans in the door and we take this room right down to 32 for two weeks, you know. On my right here, we have uh, the hay storage and uh, some of the uh, venue for the events. And on this left-hand side, we have uh, the winery operation. All uh, former dairy buildings that have been repurposed for the beef and the, the wine industry. We have a way to uh, clear this out and, and make wine and, uh, and or bottle or whatever we're doing. And then the next day, we have an event, 500 people. So uh, here at Plaisance, uh, since we were in the nursery business, we have a lot of different varieties of wines. We make 24 different wines. Um, we start with a healthy grape, and then we let the natural order of things carry it through to make wine. We try not to interfere. I don't try to uh, make price points or make it to any style. I just try to make wine that I like, and I hope other people like it as well. And so far, it's worked out pretty well.